Hello, welcome back to another video. My name is Mike Davies, and in today's tutorial, I'll be showing you how to make the text or the font in your GIMP UI larger, as well as your icons. I'll be using GIMP version 2.10.24, which is the latest version of GIMP at the time of this tutorial. Before we get into that, don't forget to check out my website at daviesmediadesign.com. As always, I have tons of free software tutorials on here as well as help articles, so definitely check that out. You can get more content with a premium membership to Davies Media Design, and you can enroll in my GIMP 2.10 Masterclass from Beginner to Pro Photo Editing on Udemy, and I'll include a link to this, as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. Here is one example of what we'll be doing for today's tutorial. So as you can see, all of the menu text here is enlarged. All of the fonts going on around here throughout the UI in various places are enlarged and we have the icons nice and huge here. This is for those of you who are straining your eyes when you're working with GIMP because the fonts are too small or the icons are too small. Also, this is going to work for Windows. Mac is going to have a different process. I'll probably do that in a different tutorial. So for starters, we need to locate the theme file on our computer. So to do that, I'll go to Edit, Preferences, and here we have the preferences dialog. Of course, everything on my computer right now is huge in my GIMP UI since I did this earlier. But what you're gonna do is you're going to scroll down here and you'll see where it says interface. This is gonna be a drop down, so it might look something like this. You're going to click to expand that drop down. And here you'll see it says theme, so you're gonna click on that option there. And here you can see is my custom theme I set up. So let me just switch over to a different theme. Let's go with dark for now. So dark theme is very popular. So your guys' theme might look something like this. But you can see here I have a folder destination and this is where GIMP is going to store its information for its themes. However, it's not gonna be the actual folder that we're gonna be changing. GIMP has a separate folder where users can store their own separate settings. That way you don't mess with the core code of GIMP. It just keeps GIMP intact. So what you're gonna do is scroll down here to the bottom to where it says folders and you're gonna to click to expand that. And you can scroll down with your mouse wheel and you're gonna see a folder here called themes. Click on that. Here you're gonna see two folder destinations. So the first one is going to be app data. This is gonna be the one we wanna work with. So I'm gonna click on this one first and let me just shrink the size of my preferences dialog here. So we're clicked on this one first. Now come over here to the little icon on the very far right. It's gonna look like a little filing cabinet. So when we click on that, it's gonna open up a file explorer window. And now here you'll see we have our folder highlighted called themes. We're gonna double click to enter this. So most of you will probably see nothing in here if you've never edited this folder. Usually this is blank, but I've added this ahead of time. What you're gonna do now is you're going to right click and go to new folder. So that gives you the option to name your new folder, name this whatever you want. I'll name this DMD underscore dark underscore custom. So I'll hit the enter key to name this. Again, doesn't matter what you name it really. And now I'm just gonna double click inside of here. So now we're inside of the custom folder we just created. And we're gonna stop right there for now on this file explorer window. So let me come over here and just minimize this. We will come back to that later, so don't exit out. So now I'm gonna come over here and this is basically going to be GIMP's system file or it's where GIMP is going to store its information for themes. So what I'll do is click on this address here at the bottom and then come over here to the little filing cabinet thing again, the little icon there. So once again, we are taken to a folder named themes. This is in a slightly different location, but I'm going to double click to enter this folder. Now you're going to see four different folders here, one for each of the default themes that comes with GIMP. Here is the system folder. This is what I worked with to start. I am going to come back to the system theme and customizing the fonts for that theme because it's a little different. But for right now, we're going to start with the dark theme here since this is a popular theme. So I'll double click to enter this. And once we're inside this folder, you'll see we have another folder named UI and then we have a file here named GTKRC. What I'm going to do is click on the GTKRC file 
and then hold the shift key and click on the UI folder. And I'll hit control C, that's going to copy this. You can also right click and go to copy. And then I'm gonna bring up the folder we created earlier. So the DMD dark custom folder here. So I'm gonna click inside of here, control V to paste or right click and go to paste. So now you're going to have the UI folder and then the GTKRC file. So basically what you need to do to edit the font of your GIMP UI is you're going to need to edit this file. So don't worry if you're not a developer and you have no idea how to code, I'm gonna walk you through this step by step so it'll be super easy. So what you'll do is right click on this file and go to open with. And you're gonna scroll down until you get to notepad. So pretty much every Windows computer should come with notepad. If you are a developer, you might have notepad plus plus but you can just go with the notepad here and come over here and click OK. So this is just a basic text editor. You're gonna get some information here about the dark theme. And what we're gonna do is scroll down. So this is basically various styling elements and you shouldn't have to scroll down too far. You can see my little scroll bar here isn't that far down. You'll see two lines of code. So first you have the little number symbol or the hashtag symbol and it says gtk-font-name. And here you have your font style or your font name and then the font size. And then down here you have another line that has some similar information. We're gonna get to that in a second. But basically this is where GIMP is storing the information for the font size of the UI. So there's two steps to this. First, we're going to change the actual size of the font. So I'm just gonna make this huge for now so that it is very noticeable when we make the change. So we'll change the font size here to 20. This is in pixels. And I'll come down here to the second line here, change that font size to 20. So that's step one of two. The second step here is we need to delete the little number sign or the hashtag sign, also known as the pound symbol. So all I'm doing is clicking in front of it and hitting the backspace key on the keyboard. So you'll see it's now deleted from this line and it's also deleted from that line. Once you've done that, you're gonna to go to File, Save, and that is going to save your GTKRC file. So if I minimize that, the file is still inside of here in our DMD dark custom folder, except now it is saved. Once I've done that, I'm going to minimize this and I'll minimize the original theme folder here so now what I need to do is exit out of here and also exit out of GIMP. And now I need to reopen GIMP. So I'll just type GIMP in my little search bar and then click to open the app. And I still have my old theme set up. So let's go to edit, preferences. And once again, we're gonna come down here to interface. So make sure you expand that and then come down here to theme. So here is that second theme we just created. And now I'm going to click on this. And you'll see when we do that, we now have this huge text. So this is 20 pixel text. And we have all of the dark theme styling. If you don't see the styling for the certain theme you wanna use, make sure you copy that UI folder into the theme folder we created. Otherwise the styling won't show up. So I had to close down GIMP and reopen it in order to bring up this new theme. However, I'm not gonna have to do that again. So if I wanted to make further changes, let's say I wanted to either tweak the size of the font or maybe even change the actual font we're using here, what I can do is open up that notepad document we were working on. And once again, here we are where we can change our font information, our font styling. So what you can actually do here is you could change this to pretty much any font that's on your computer. Not all fonts are gonna work with GIMP. However, in my testing, a lot of fonts did work with this. You can also use what are basically going to be default font styles found on every computer. So here you see it says Sans. You can also do something like Serif, which is a font type, Monospace, which is another one, and I think Cursive, and fantasy or other font types. Or you can go with an actual font name if you know a font name. So for example, I'll go with Hansif. That's one font I was testing out earlier. So I've got that up here. And I could also do it down here if I needed to. You don't have to do it for both, I believe. 
but let me just change this one to 16 as well. So that's going to reduce the font size. We'll change this to 16. So now we've changed the actual font and the font size. Make sure there is a space uh, between your font name and the size. So I'll hit Control S to save that. And now we'll minimize that. And this time, instead of closing GIMP and reopening it, just make sure you're clicked on your custom theme and then hit Reload Current Theme. And so now you'll see what will happen is the font size will decrease a bit and it's changed to that hand C font, which was a free font I downloaded from the internet. I do have an entire tutorial dedicated to downloading and installing free fonts for GIMP. I recommend you check that out if you wanna use your own custom font. So that was for the dark theme. The system theme is gonna be slightly different. So I'll show you how to do that. First, let me just change the font back to something a bit more normal. The default is gonna be sans. So you could just change that back to sans. Control S to save it. And actually we're gonna be done with this document. So let me just exit out and reload the current theme. So when we're working with the system theme, it's gonna be the same start. We're gonna come over here to folders and we're gonna scroll down to themes. Again, you're gonna to wanna to open up this folder here, the app data folder, which of course I already have opened here. So let's back it up and we're gonna right click inside of here and go to new folder. DMD system theme, I'll name this two since I did this earlier, hit the enter key. Double click to enter inside of there and we can minimize that. And once again, you're gonna click on here and click the little filing cabinet icon. That's gonna bring up your original themes folder here. So in this case, I can just back up a step. So if you use that icon again, it'll take you right here. Double click to enter themes. So now this time we'll go into system and you'll notice here that this one does not have the UI folder. It only has the GTKRC file. So this is the first main difference here with the system theme rather than using one of the other themes. So I'll click on here, control C, we're gonna copy that. Come back to our custom folder, control V to paste. So that part is the same. However, now we're gonna right click, open with, and again, we'll go with notepad and click okay. So the reason this one is different is that the code looks slightly different. So what I'm gonna do is scroll down here and this time there's only gonna be one line that we need to change. So it says font name sans 10. So we need to delete this little pound symbol here or the hashtag symbol. However, you also need to delete all of this as well. This was a mistake I made when I was researching this. If you don't delete all of these lines here, it's not going to work. So make sure you highlight all this and hit the backspace key. And then you can come over here and change this to whatever you want. So let's go with 16 again. And once we're ready, I'll hit Control S to save or of course, File Save. So we'll minimize this. And because this is gonna be a brand new theme, we're gonna need to close down GIMP one more time and open it back up. And the reason this theme keeps popping up, the original theme from the beginning, is I haven't been saving my new preferences. But let's go to edit, preferences, and we're going to come down here to interface, click on theme. So here was the second theme I just created, the second system theme, it'll probably look the same. So it is pretty similar. The only thing that did not update here is going to be the top menu, but that's how you increase the fonts for the system UI. So let me just come over and choose the DMD Dark Custom for the rest of this tutorial, which we're almost done here. If I wanted to increase the size of my icons, I can come over here just below theme and click on icon theme. And you can choose whatever color you wanna use here. I'll stick with color. And then all you need to do is click this drop down here. And usually it says guess icon size from resolution. So you'll see this makes the icons much smaller. What I typically do is choose the custom icon size option. And then you're just gonna click on this until the icons, you'll see a little square here, move all the way over to the size you need. So this is large, this is what I typically work with, but you can also go all the way to huge. And now you have these huge icons. So make sure to save your preferences that you click okay. And that way next time you open up GIMP, this is what GIMP will look like.
All right, so that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you liked it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon to be notified each time I have a brand new tutorial. You can check out any of the links to my resources in the description of the video. But thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.